we're just humans who are born to relate and live in dense, beautiful, complex relations and to spend most of our day attending to those relations, uh, human and non-human. That's what we're made for. All those measures of success, market share, uh, you know, all of those things do not matter if we don't make sure we have a planet. And we have to make sure we have a planet now. And that means we have to think about time in a very different way. We have to slow things down. The way that that can, over time, become more healthy, more whole, the way that cities can become more integrated into their landscapes, really reshaped the way that I thought about wildness. Now, I don't usually, I, 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 I'm just, as I'm saying this out loud, I'm noticing that, uh, that I don't really use the term very much anymore, like natural or you know, artificial, like those things are more porous for me now. It doesn't help to think about our kinship with the non-human world in strictly genealogical terms. Um, that's the sort of idea which when people keep saying, oh, if we could just discover the, the, the sort of uh, kinship we have through our hunter-gatherer ancestors, that somehow it's some sort of evolved predisposition that we have and that we've inherited, that sort of genealogical thinking is not helpful, dodges, it, it, it makes it seem as though kinship is some sort of evolved capacity when really it's part of the process of evolution in itself. Bad story comes out of bad relation. Um, bad story is wrong story. Wrong story in our way is any story that is, um, any story that's composed by an individual uh, for individual purpose. Uh, it's always bad story. It always has a bad effect. It's always a lie. You know, for us, it's um, you have to have that con collective sense making where we yarn together, you know, collectively. And all those different viewpoints, data points, everything comes together. It doesn't matter if some of them are contradictory. They sit together easily, well, and respectfully. We should be talking about belonging. We should be talking about, we should be talking about belonging in a, in a, um, deep belonging deep belonging so deep time long yeah. you know this whole concept of everything has just been shortened mm. and as devastating as this COVID-19 pandemic has been I think that it's also given us a window of opportunity to shift things because regardless of who we were where we come from what educational attainment we have how much money you have in a bank which university you went to, what gender, anything, every single one of us around the world was forced to stop. Extend our empathic imagination into the lives of other creatures that are non-mammals, that aren't even on four legs, you know, that, that navigate the world with a whole different sensory apparatus, you know, that see in different colors than we do, that experience, you know, through taste or touch much more than we do. Um, that's just, I think that's just a, a wonderful, wonderful way uh, and practice of, of becoming better kin. What the living right. organism is, is a sort of deflection, an eddy in the current of life that, that for a while, imagine the water's flowing along and for a while they're just, they're, they're just um, pulled aside a little bit. And as they're pulled aside, they turn into an eddy like this. And the eddy is the organism, the living organism, but eventually, the energy, it becomes too depleted, it can't hold out any longer, and then it flows back into the water again. The beautiful implication of that is, of course, is that when we die, we actually rejoin life. How do we address disadvantage when we depend so much on disadvantage? I mean, the entire system would be incapable of feeding any of us unless it was starving half of us. Uh, and that's not a numbers game. That's purely part of the economic wizardry of um, of this um, supply and demand curse. This 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 funny idea of an equilibrium, this economic problem that demand needs to exceed supply if economic growth is to continue. Blockchain technology is not new. There were ancient Mexican civilizations in Tenochtitlan that had decentralized uh, agriculture. Uh, called Chinampas. Lots of uh, traditions and families and uh, cultures from the global south use 
a decentralized system for naming their family. So my father was Nigerian, Igbo. And there is, you, with, by your names, you're able to tell who your ancestry is. And so we have to recognize that these things go in cycles and that history has a very important part to play. But we also need to be mindful to not get caught up in nostalgia and to keep trying to recreate the past. Trying to make the point somewhat forcefully about, you know, the world doesn't need saviors is, at least in my life, you know, it was, you know, ca carrying that sort of burden, that sort of story on one's back is, can be so debilitating. And the world is, it's good to put things in perspective and know the world will, you know, the earth uh, is um, completely capable on its own. Like we can align ourselves with the earth. It's not a matter of us coming, sweeping in to save the day. Uh, we are very much inside our own doings that the, um, we are what we do. And, and the trouble with the whole idea of agency is that it supposes that there is an agent who then does something. When, when what we need to start from is the doing of things, the, the action in the world out of which any sense of who we are and what we are doing falls out. So agency does not come before action. And most of the time it's a concept that we simply don't need. You'll find a lot of us out there sort of admonishing you on social media to listen to Indigenous people because we've got the answers, we've had them for 100,000 years. And, um, you know, if you just stop being white and shut up and listen for a minute or, you know, whatever it is that you are, just set aside your maleness or your whatever it is, just shut up and listen. And, you know, silence is not an option either. Silence is not an option, but shut up and listen. And we have all these answers for you. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of people who are really desperate for the answers, and they they're like they need indigenous wisdom, like air. And um, so come looking around, and what is there? Well, I see that dream catcher. I see that pipe. I see that drum. I see those sticks. Um, you know, I have those. <laughs> then I'll start running workshops because I did like one peyote retreat once. So now I'm a child of the universe and I'm a teacher. <laughs> um, you know, people take things. I mean, and it's funny and it's silly and you feel sad for those people, but it's not like an aha, there's an evil person or whatever. Somebody who's just trying to be human again. <laughs> we tend to anthropomorphize technology. And why, so if it's a digital thing, why are we then putting human emotions, human relationship voices back into it? It feels like there is subconsciously, there is this desire to reconnect. It's such a, a struggle, isn't it? Um, that we think we have to be something that we're not, <laughs> or that we have to do something that is only would register as a major sort of uh, ripple, you know? Um, but, you know, the truth is, you know, our, our everyday is, is, I'm not going to even say just as, it's more important, you know, than, than these, it's what these other things arise out of. Longing and, is about something that is beyond, just beyond the horizons of conceptualization. And then you don't know, you can't tell whether what you're longing for is something that was in the past or something that was in, that, that, that is to come in the future, because actually, at that moment, um, past and future uh, link up and we find that uh, we are becoming the people we've been and ceasing to be the people whom we have become. Yeah, you gotta protect yourself. You leave yourself open, vulnerable to recruitment, to radicalization, to all kinds of things if you get too woo-woo. Um, be also open to radicalization if you go too far the other way and get all like, oh, the data doesn't care about your feelings kind of thing. So um, I'm not saying get in the middle either because that's bullshit as well. Just like scrap the whole thing, you know. Um, there's another way. Um, that way is your way. You won't find it in other people's cultures. You'll find it in dialogue with other people's cultures and with people who are different from you. But in the end, you'll be finding your own way back to being human. And that's going to be the only way for you.